everybody. Lawrence Crazy Pet Show is thrilled to the bone. We are at the second longest continuous sporting event. Do you know what that is? The 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. And we're on location today. And look, I have the president here. And we are so happy to see you, Chad. Lauren, it's great to be here. Ugh. And thank you for being here. Oh, and we love it. I cannot believe there are 2,600 dogs here entered. This is huge. It's amazing. They come from all over the country, 49 states. Wow. They're from 14 countries outside the United States. So it is amazing. And all these people love their dogs. They love it. They and love they it. they come here to be the best of the best. Which is really interesting because they come from all over, like you said, but there's 204 different breeds. Right. How can that be? They're so different, but everybody has their own dog and their own love, and we love all dogs here so what we're celebrating with these breeds and these owners is really companionship how do you take care of your dog well you know we have many many dogs here breeds that are doing they learn to do different things sometimes it's a bomb sniffing dog that might have been a hunting dog trained for that there's some dogs that are trained to be empathetic and you have people that are are sick or have anxiety and the dogs are trained literally to put their paws on their feet to calm them it is beautiful and so for us we just celebrate all of that. To us, when I see an owner or a handler and their dog, and you see the connection that they have, it's so important. We have a wonderful partnership with the American Heart Association, and they do an incredible amount of research to talk about how we're healthier because of dogs. Wow. And they calm us. It's a really wonderful For sure. We did, I did definitely agree with that. Now, so the diversity of the breeds, let's let people know who aren't lucky enough to be here today, because you have toys, you right. have hounds, you have the different class explain that and why they are broken up into those different categories well they all have different different purposes the work that they do some dogs are herding dogs another dog is a retriever and they're trained to go out and get things and bring them back as we might know so all of those different dogs go into different groups so if you start with these 2600 dogs and then we move them into seven groups and so the the 2600 dogs every single breed there's one dog that comes out of the breed then that dog goes into a, one of the seven groups. And then at Madison Square Garden at night, there's one winner out of each group. And then in the end on Best in Show Night, there's seven dogs at the end of Tuesday. And look, every dog here is a wonderful, beautiful dog. Every dog. Um, but in the end, there is only one Westminster there champion. There's only one top dog. But what people always ask me, at least, is how can they choose? I mean, they're all so different but there is a method. Yes, the American Kennel Club has a breed standard for every dog, and so every dog, there's a standard. You know, if the, the purpose of that dog, this is what the standard is. But I'll tell you that there are dogs that are showmen, and, and you know, and they come out and they do just incredible, they just own the stage, and sometimes that can influence a judge, but, judge. but in the end, it's really about the standard. But not all the dogs that win were bred in America. That's correct. Which I find very interesting. Well, it's a very international sport now, and there are people from all over the world, and the, the American Kennel Club has its standards. There are standards around the world for different dogs. It's, it's a fascinating thing. It's becoming more and more popular. We have people here from Japan, as I said, 14 countries. We have people from all over Europe, and now people from America go over to Europe to show their dogs as well. So it's really fantastic to see. I like young people coming into the sport to understand that there's a place to be involved, a place to be engaged, but uh, there's only one Westminster. The history is interesting because the first show, you, there was like 35 dogs, right? and that helped build the ASPCA. Right. There were all, so many things that came out of it because what people saw was the love of dogs, yeah. right? And that turned into people saying, how do we care for dogs more carefully? So Westminster was the root, and then many, many amazing organizations grew out of it. We're continuing to be a part of that. And here you are today. Do you have a dog? I do. What's the breed or the type? I have Norwich Terriers, but oh, the secret, don't tell anyone. My mother has always bred Norwich Terriers, so I didn't have a choice, <laughs> but I love them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're so excited. We have lots more to come, so everybody stay tuned. We are on location in New York City at the Piers, which is very nice, by the way, for the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We continue on location at Pier 94. We are at the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. And there are so many dogs here, so many varieties, like this beautiful giant schnauzer named Jake. You'll meet him later. He is absolutely fabulous. There's every shape. 
There's every color. There's every size. It is amazing how many different dogs there are. And here there's about 204 different breeds and everyone is a champion. Everyone is so special and everyone has a story. Wow, what kind of dog is this? This is a Petit Bisset Griffon Vendillon. Oh, that's it's a, a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, commonly referred to as PBGV. Yes. A little easier and a good way to remember it is peanut butter guava dog. Yeah, I can't, <laughs> Get all the initials in there. And they're French hounds. They're bred to hunt rabbits in the fields of the Vendillon region in France. Their coats are wire coats so that it can protect them against the thicket as they go through the thicket looking for the rabbits. Having shows like this, a bench show where people can come in and meet oh the God. breed and see them is so important. I want people to know that it's a great happy hound, that they work well with the family. As you can see, she's very mobile. <laughs> they and want happy. attention. Certainly. They want attention and they're fun to be with. So I hope people get an opportunity to meet the breed at one of their local dog shows. Now this is Chuck and he is spectacular. Oh yes. And you said he is related to one of the all-time yes. best dogs. Both he champion. and Pete are related to Uno and Miss P. Which was same a... breeders, same co-breeders. Yes. And that was a big Westminster yes, champion. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, Absolutely. Yes. Now tell us about a beagle because they're so cute you just want to squeeze well, them. Well, the thing is about beagles is they're versatile. Like both of my dogs paddleboard with me for miles. They love to paddleboard. Both dive underwater, they fish underwater. They are incredibly versatile. They're both uh, service dogs. They go to nursing homes really? and they educate with me. I go to schools with them and teach about responsible dog ownership. Which is And absolutely. education is the main thing. That's why we're in this sport. What are beagles bred to do? They've been around for centuries. In England, they were meant to fox they hunted foxes. But I mean, he's so totally cute too. Does oh, he, he like to sit on the couch? Um, yes, this is a mush dog. He yeah. is very soft, very, very soft, very, very loving with every family member. He's best friends to anyone who loves him. These are called skipper keys, yep. right? Mm -hmm. They're sort of unusual. I don't see many. Yeah, they're not rare, but they're hard to come by. And um, what are they bred to do? Uh, they were in Belgium, they were on barges and they were ratters. I understand they make really great pets. They are great pets. Mine sit on top of my couch. They let us know when somebody's coming down the driveway. They get along with all my son's friends. They're a good family dog. Very cute. Yes. So not all the dogs here were furry. In <laughs> fact, we found one that is exquisite. Probably should win the whole Westminster. He actually won last year. That is the uh, Fox Terrier. His name's King. So we rebuilt him and brought him here this year to show everybody. These are Legos. Yes, yes, 100%. How long does this take you to put together? The dog itself took about 10, 10 days. It's about 20,000 pieces. And we do customize dogs, so if you have a dog or a loved one out there that you want a sculpture made out of, just contact us on Facebook or Instagram and we will definitely get that going for you. I want your job. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, I love it. Say the breed's name, Glen of... So, so it's called a Glen of a Mall. Glen of a Mall, because you said like it, a mall. And it rhymes like best of them all. So that's how I tell people to remember of it. Glen of a Mall, best yes. of them and they're, all. They're kind of interesting because they have dwarf legs, they're long bodied, and they don't shed. So you don't have to groom them, you just pull their hair. Now, are they athletic? What were they bred well, to do? So they're actually, they're, they're bred to chase down barmen, and they're bred to do it quietly. So they're not barkers necessarily. They're smart and independent workers, but they're also like teddy bears. Like in the morning, I have to like pull them out of bed and say, come on, let's go, because they're willing to play, but, but they're also great couch potatoes. This is a Nor Luden. Norwegian Lundahund. Norwegian Lundahund. Oh, yay! Puffin dog, yes. And she is Eva. Yep, this is Eva. She's four years old. She has been bred to climb cliffs in order to catch the puffin birds and get them out of the nest. Obviously, they can't do that anymore, so they are now just pets. And now they're eating hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> now, they're unusual also. Not only do are they kind of foxy looking, but they have six toes. Correct, on so every foot. They they actually use it like a thumb, so they can actually climb and they can grasp with it. They can spread their paws out to climb up or down a mountain. My gosh, she's so cute. You also said that she's unusual here. Yes, they're missing a tendon that a lot of dogs have, which allows them to bring their legs all the way out to the sides. They can flip their heads all the way back. Wow. And close their ears both up and down. What is her history? The history of the breed is they can't trace this back to any other dog that exists today. Wow. So they believe this might be one of the purebred breeds that survived the Ice Age. It's that old. There's only about 2,000 in the world. There's only a couple hundred in the United States. Beautiful. So this is Titus. He is a champion, of course, because to be here you have to be a champion, but he won today. And not only that, he also has a very special story of how he got here. Sandra, yes. this is unbelievable. So Titus was bit by a snake. Yikes! 
What last happened? May. We were in between two shows and we just let him out in the backyard and I think he like went to kick back a couple of leaves and there was a snake there. Yikes! So yeah, the snake bit him in the back left leg. I bathed him the, the day after is when I noticed it. It was a little bit of swelling. I called my vet right away and he told me to go ahead and start putting him on an antibiotic and a steroid because we thought it was just some type of bite. We right, of course. It was a snake bite. So it progressed over like the next couple of days. Oh. His entire leg swelled up no. into his thigh. Wow. So we found a great country vet where we were up in uh, Concord, North Carolina, and she was able to drain the leg, and then we were able to put a drain in to get him some relief. Was he limping? Was He leg... never limped a single day. He never uh, missed a beat. You, you must have been a nervous wreck. I was. I thought we were going to lose the leg. Oh. And I didn't even think that we were ever going to show him again, and that wasn't even in the thoughts. I would just wanted him to get better and Aww. have his leg. But it's healed beautifully. It's healed. We did a whole bunch of care, you know, ongoing care every day. I bet. In order to get that leg back yeah, to where I mean, it is I, now. Like we're talking about the story, but I'm sure you were just thinking, oh, please just let him be okay. Yes, we just wanted him to be How okay. How did you find out it was a snake? Uh, we had uh, multiple vets take a look at him. And they, and say, they oh, said it looked very similar to a snake by either a copperhead or a pygmy rattle. Well, that'll teach him for kicking up again. Right. <laughs> you better go in the potty house next time. What a beautiful dog. Oh, and what a beautiful you. story. Thank you. And congratulations, because this is fantastic. You won the breed here. Yes, we did. We won the breed here. So you're heading over to the actual garden Correct. for the best in breed, and we wish you the best of luck. Uh, thank and, you guys and, so much. More than anything, we're so glad he's okay. Thank you. I love all those special stories, and we found another one right here with Jake. This is Jake. The giant schnauzer, you saw him earlier. Well, this is his mom, Dorothy. And Jake is really her service dog, too. I love that, Dorothy. Yes. When Jake was 10 weeks old, I started training him. I had some medical issues that I couldn't even get off the couch. Oh, Dorothy. And Jake would come over. I would call him. He would brace and help pull me up. Wow. And if I wanted to go places like the farmer's market or do stuff socially with friends, oh. he made it easier for me because he would carry a pack and carry whatever I needed. Like, if we wanted to hike, I could hike, but I couldn't carry things. So Jake would do that for me. Isn't it amazing yes. what dogs can do? He also, he competes. He was the number one breed dog in Giant wow. Schnauzers in 2019 with mommy showing him. Thank you, Dorothy. Yes, thank I love you. your baby. Thank you very much. And we are coming back. Stay tuned. Isn't this fabulous? Oh, my God. Can I get a kissy going out? Kissy kiss. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We continue our fabulous show. We are having so much fun. We're on location at the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. And look who we found. This is Archer. He is so beautiful. You're going to find out a little bit about him in a minute. But first, we wanted everybody to have a look at a wonderful event that happens before the actual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. It's called AKC Meet the Breeds, and it's a chance for everybody to get a good look at some of the history and the culture behind our fabulous dog breeds. Take a look. So we had to come over here because these are some of my favorite dogs. They're called Commodore, is that right? Yeah. Commodore, yeah. They are so impressive. Let's talk about who we're looking at. You're looking at Zen, who's in my hands right here, and she is three and a half years old. She is mom. To her left is Bam Bam, who is her eight-month-old puppy, which is the difference in cords and further over you. You also have her other boy who is Ansel and then to behind us is Calvin, the father of the boys. The difference in the coat is age. The puppies are in puppy coat and it is so soft oh. and so wonderful. They're like giant polar bears. Oh. They are from Hungary. They're the Hungarian livestock guard dogs. And their job is to guard the rack of sheep in Hungary. And the rack of sheep, if you look them up, look just like an adult commodore, except they have giant horns. Okay. So it's very, very cool. And this one, oh wow, I can't believe this one's ears. He's uh, one of the more uncommon breeds in the United States right now. There's only about 400 or 500 of them in the United States at the moment. How do you pronounce it? It's it's pronounced Cheer Neko Del Etna. So I always break it down for people, Cheer Neck 
Oh. They're bred to actually hunt rabbit and their body shape and their body type allow them to jump up rocks on the volcano of Mount Etna and go after these small game prey. I keep thinking they look like a pharaoh hound. They do look like a smaller pharaoh hound. They all come from the same region similarly. About 3,000 years ago, they come from the similar breed. He looks very agile and the ears are like to die for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we actually have him clocked in at running around 28 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah. And of course, look who we met here. We have a fantastic follow-up. You just met him on our show, Joe and Lenny. And here you are, meet the breeds. <laughs> and your, your booth was you mobbed. Oh yeah, definitely. It was like that yesterday too. It's been fantastic. We're so honored to be here to help represent the Boston Terrier breed. Um, it's a fantastic breed. They just really aim to please their people. They love dogs and cats as well. They're known as the American gentlemen, and they look like they're wearing a tuxedo 24-7, so they're always the best dressed guys in the room. So. I love it. And of course, people who watch our show know you because we just did a wonderful story with both of you. Yeah, it was so much fun. Well, uh, we love we're really, really grateful for you that. Aren't, you aren't lifting weights today. Not today. <laughs> just 16-pound just Lenny. That's it. <laughs> Well, we're at Meet the Breeds, but there are also cats here. And this is a very unusual breed. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Nebulum. It means Nebulum. creature of the mist. Originally started in the United States. They had become very popular, and then they disappeared. They are currently very popular in Europe. This is Penny, and she is from Holland. She is an import. They like to sit on your lap, sit under your lap, sit under your legs, under the blankets. They're a real comfort cat. This is an Orient short hair. I have never seen a cat like this before. Yes, this is her name is Bambi. She's an oriental short hair. She's a chocolate ticked tabby, which is an unusual color. And the oriental short hair is essentially a Siamese, but with a different color. And they come in a variety of colors. They come in almost every imaginable color. Not quite all, but <laughs> most of them. They will follow you around. They want to talk to you. They want to be involved in everything that you're doing. A lot of them play fetch. They're like the gymnasts of the cat fancy. Now, this is one of the newly recognized breeds. We were recognized fully by AKC in 2015, but it's really a very ancient French herding breed, probably the oldest French herding breed, the root breed for Briars and Beaucerons and such. They were bred to herd sheep. They are all around farm dogs in France. Here people use them to herd sheep and ducks, and some people will do obedience, agility. We even have people doing dock diving now with them. They like water. All right, so you know, I had to find my Bouviers, and we did, and Joanne, this is so great. I have to share it with everybody. So you are a Bouvier person. I am a big time Bouvier person, but for those who don't know about the Bouviers, but hopefully you know my Anoki, let's talk about some of the characteristics. Sure, so a Bouvier is a herding breed. They were bred to herd cattle and to pull milk carts. They're an all around farm dog and they're a great family dog. As a larger herding breed, though, they are called drovers. So you have the smaller herding breeds that get right in there and nip it, the cattle or the livestock. These guys took care of the back or the side, and that's why they had the fall. The fall protects them from all that debris that's being kicked up by the sheep or the cattle. Oh, so it, it's, I love to find out about all the different wonderful breeds. And, and this is Archer. You met him a little bit before. And this is Jessica, his mom. Hi. And he's actually a champion, as are all the dogs here, yep. but a little bit different. This is Archer. He's a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. That's a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> it is a mouthful. He's six years old. He loves all of the attention and the activity. And he loves the water, loves it very much. They are a, a water retriever for ducks. You can do anything with them, agility, rally. Uh, can they be any cuter? I don't think so. <laughs> no, this is about as cute as it gets. It was so it is perfect. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, he's tired. Thank yeah. you so much, You're Jessica. More than Welcome, thank you. We'll be back. Stay tuned, everybody. More on Lauren's Crazy Pet Show coming up next. Welcome back, everybody. Lauren's Crazy Pet Show is back at Pier 94 at the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. And look behind me. This is the trophy that every single dog here, and there's so many of them, is hoping to go home with. But 
Only one can. However, everybody here is a winner. So who doesn't love a fabulous Basset Hound, especially one, this is Peppy, who just won your breed. Congratulations, right. Candy. Thank you. Thank that you was very some much. show. There were how many in the ring? Eight or nine. They're so cute too. Yeah, they are cute. Oh. They're adorable. When you see a Basset Hound, you just fall in love. Are they obedient? Some have different senses of humor, he included. Sometimes when I call him, he'll like look at me and go, yeah, right. <laughs> But then he'll wag his tail a certain way, and I know all I gotta do is wait, <laughs> and he'll come. He's waiting for the what's in it for me. What's <laughs> like in a it? Treat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, now everybody's got to look at this dog. It is such a beauty. This is Zeba, and you have done very well today. She won best of breed. Fence. She is the set first in the Rottweiler breed history to ever win Westminster two years in a row. Whoa, are you mommy? Yes, I'm breeder owner. That Fantastic. Yes. You must be is. doubly proud, right? right. That's another I dimension. Am. Right. It is. It's very surreal. Let's talk about the Rottweiler. It's one of my favorite breeds, and I think it's really misunderstood. It is. It is. It's all about breeding the correct temperament, socialization, and how the dog is treated and handled. And giving plenty of treats, because we right. know. Right. <laughs> Obviously. She had a couple of nice little trips there that she was doing. What were they bred to do? They were bred as drover dogs Which and is cattle dogs for herding. For herding. Yes, they are. But they're in dogs. the working class here. Yes, they're very versatile. From therapy work, the service dog, to agility, to dock diving. I have a dock diver at home. Really? If, yeah, they, if they love swimming, it's then there you go. So, Kim, congratulations. Thank you. You had a wonderful win here today. Yes, we did. It was his fourth time winning Best of Breed here. That's so it fantastic. was great. He's American Staffordshire Terrier, similar in style type breed to the Pitbull, as the people say, but they're a very misunderstood breed. He's just, they're wonderful family companions, very loyal to their people, very versatile breed. He actually barn hunts. He has a barn hunt title. He has a dock diving title. He also has a lure coursing title. Really? Yes, he lo they love to do do that, chase the lures. They're a very versatile breed. They pretty much want to do whatever you ask them to do. Now, these are owner handlers, which means not only do you handle the dog, you also own the dog, and you said these are your pets, too. Yes, uh, no professional handling for us. We just take our dogs out doing what we love with them and at the end of the day they come home on the couch in the bed loving life we do this on the side kind of for fun and here we are i love it but because you're an owner handler don't you get mad or if you're like this is my baby you're not picking my baby you know <laughs> no and i'll tell you why because being an owner handler going against the pros makes you a better handler because you're constantly with the top talent in your breed, in your group, and so there's no slacking off. So I welcome pro handlers in the ring, and it's just really nice to be able to, to go head-to-head -head with them. Now, let's talk about the breed. I mean, I love, the, it, how do you say it, Weimarama? Weimaraner. Weimaraner. You're really close. I was You're close. really close. Aren't they known as the gray ghosts? The gray ghosts. And I'll tell you, as the sun is setting, you can't see them in the backyard anymore. <laughs> they're so beautiful. Now, they're bred, are they sporting dogs? They are in the sport breed they have prey drive so they're not a breed for the first time owner unless you're willing to go and run with them and play mind games with them and even in the middle of winter when it's 20 below you're still gonna have to do mind mental games even if it's just hide and seek my husband and I will put both of our wine runners in the bathroom and then one of us will go hide <laughs> and then we open the door and they run around the house <laughs> sniffing out so because again as a pointer you know they're looking for game That's great. then they just find you and then they run right back to the bathroom let's play again let's play again let's play again <laughs> Three or four rounds of that? You're exhausted. They are exhausted. <laughs> they are. So that 20 below, you didn't even have to put any boots on. Well, that's a good thing. They're back Definitely. on the couch. Wow, what a spectacular show. We have had so much fun. We hope you've had fun, too. And we can't wait till next year. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Lauren's Crazy Pet Show.